whitewater strategy consists of two things, how you look at the river and how you approach it through what you have discerned. There is no one way to run a river, and although there are rapids that have been run thousands of times, we should each approach the rapid with the idea that it has never been run at all. What does this mean exactly? Truth is, every time we put our butts down in a boat and we slide into the current, we ultimately are on our own. There very much is a team aspect to river running and approaching rapids with safety, but when we make that decision to run the rapid, we should be making that decision as if we were by ourselves. This mindset saves us from the blindly running into a rapid that may be way over our heads. Being honest with yourself and having a bit of humility goes a long way. However, there are also those times where fear might be the thing holding us back from pushing on to a new plane of skill. Regardless, take your river running serious but lighthearted. Play the river but keep your head on a swivel. Basically, trust your gut and think critically all while making sure to save time for expectationless paddling. Many folks tell me during lessons that they want to read water better. Water reading is synonymous with scouting. There is literally no difference. You can scout from shore, from the boat, from an eddy, on the move, or from another paddler's beta. The only limitation to your ability to read water is your imagination and experience with features. The shore scout gives you a big picture view of the rapid and gives you a great opportunity to discuss additional safety if necessary. The disadvantage to this method is that almost everything you see from shore will look completely different from the boat. The shore scout is a great place to make sure a rapid is free and clear of hidden hazards and pick out landmarks or find eddies that will aid in a boat scout. The danger of the shore scout is the obvious rugged terrain and walking on wet rocks, but there is a more abstract hazard of trying to micromanage your run from this vantage point. A better way to start picking apart the rapid is from the boat, as this is how you are going to see the river when it comes time to run it. This is my preferred method to scout, as it is quicker and conserves energy, and more often than not, there is plenty of room on the river to scout from eddy to eddy. However, if in doubt, always fall back on the golden rule, get out and scout. Let's talk a bit about how we can break a rapid apart and use its features to our full advantage. If we just stay in the main flow and paddle on, everything comes at us much faster, which as you get better can be a lot of fun and works on your ability to adapt lines. But working through a rapid from eddy to eddy breaks it up and slows it down. I like to work at angles or working from one side of the river to the other. What this does is maximize my view of the intended point B. The more I see of the eddy, the easier it will be to drive my momentum into the eddy. Likewise, if I am thinking about a good spot to boat scout from, I want to be on the opposite side of the river to get the most information. The common mistake is to start on the same side of the river as where you are planning to go. This effectively puts my momentum moving downstream instead of into the eddy. This also obstructs our view of that side of the river. If you want to make your move towards an eddy, you need to leave the eddy you are in with the intention of catching that next one. That usually means setting up your momentum early on and sticking with it. Things don't always happen the way you envisioned it and having a plan B is always a good idea too. Doing these kinds of moves generally puts people moving through the current laterally or sideways in the current, which makes many advanced beginners and intermediates uneasy. Truth is, if you want to move on to the next phase of kayaking, you will have to get used to being sideways to the current and features. I think my biggest breakthrough was using features such as waves and mild holes to help me move my boat laterally or even to attain upstream. Using breaking waves or holes helps prevent your momentum from progressing downstream, all while moving you from one side of the river to the other. Of course, taking some time to learn to read these features is a big help, and even hopping in and playing in them is a big help as well. A quick note on hole surfing, as I think that there are even advanced boaters, myself included, who from time to time do what is instinctual instead of what's safe while surfing in a hole. It's very easy to get panicked when something unintentional happens, but the main thing is to take a moment and get your bearings. 
When stuck in holes, most paddlers will actually instinctually try to pull themselves out of the hole with a big hanging draw. Not only is this a great way to put a lot of strain on your shoulders, but it effectively pulls you over downstream and not out of the hole. Alternatively, assume the oh crap position when you suddenly find yourself surfing. Tuck forward and hold your paddle low, rolling your wrists as necessary to gain purchase in the foam pile. The nice thing about this position is if you do find that you flip over, you will be in a much more protected and better position to roll. Most of the time, the paddle actually finds the downstream or high side and begins the roll automatically. When you are in a high brace and reaching out with your arms, you lose the strength of your core and pull yourself over and onto the back deck. Once you have your bearings, sit up a little bit and with low angle strokes, either move yourself forward or push yourself backwards out of the hole. If you use wide sweeping strokes, this will actually add some stability as you actually paddle out of the hole. Once you start getting comfortable putting yourself in holes, you will be less awkward when around them. Read their kick or their direction of travel and use them to your advantage. Putting all of this into practice and absolute precision are attainments. There is no better way to see how efficient you are at paddling than to paddle back upstream against the flow. This will test your knowledge of features, momentum, and stroke work and show a paddler where the work needs to be done. It may seem trite and overrated, but if you stick with it, you will watch all of your paddling increase in efficiency. Not to mention, this is a great low water alternative to sitting on the couch. Communication is an essential tool to making good downstream progress, and the group dynamic affects this. Having a plan for the day that the whole group can agree on will set the group up for success, and having a varied group dynamic will help as well. It is important to have a strong leader on the river when the going gets tough. But remember, a leader is best when people barely know they exist. When the work is done and the aim fulfilled, they will say, we did this ourselves.